Well, if getting rebounds was that easy, welcome to boarding school, everybody. Doug Scottle, retired head men's basketball coach at Colorado Mesa University, and currently a skill development coach at Johnson County Community College. And we're going to take a look. Our topic today is involves uh, rebounding and rebounding when you don't have height. Now, the things that we're going to the, to the things we'll discuss in here, whether you're small or tall. Uh, if, if you follow the, some of these guidelines in here, you're going to find out that you're going to become a better rebounder as a player or a better rebounding team. I was inspired by small rebounders back in 1975. Pueblo South High School boys won the Colorado Large Class State Championship, and their tallest player was 6'2". And I remember them in a semifinal game playing against Loveland High School that had a 7-foot center, and yet they south out-rebounded uh, Loveland in that game. In fact, they, they out-rebounded everybody on the way to their state uh, championship. So I did some research on this topic. It's, uh, I'm finding out it's not a very exciting topic because, number one, there's not a lot of videos out there on offensive rebounding, and number two, there are not a lot of viewers uh, on the few uh, uh, videos that, that are out there. And I understand that because... Um, you know, rebounding, offensive rebounding, we'll just talk about in particular here, is it's really not a fun thing because the, the key is to have great determination and, and relentless effort. And uh, so I understand the lack of enthusiasm that uh, someone might have, either as a coach or as a player, to get really good at, at, uh, uh, at offensive rebounding. But I'm reminded of, uh, there's a saying that I have, I've used for a long time, and it goes like this, successful people will do what unsuccessful people don't like to do. Let me say that again. Successful people will do what unsuccessful people don't like to do. Doesn't mean that the successful people like doing it, but they understand that it's the little things, not the big things. See, it's not what offense you run, it's or what defense you run, it's it's the little things that that uh, make up for great execution in that offense or defense that makes it successful. Now, I mentioned that, you know, this is kind of a toughie for players too. Uh, because you're, what you're going to find is your top kid may get, of, of all your shots, uh, you know, your own uh, team shots that go up, your top offensive rebounder may only get 12 to 15 percent of the offensive rebounds. Now, what does that mean? And then the rest of them, uh, kids are going to fall into around 8, you know, 8 percent, 7 percent, 6 percent. Uh, now, it might be a little bit higher, for, you know, uh, for your kids if you don't play as many players. Uh, at Johnson County Community College, we play 10 kids, and so that, that percentage gets spread out a little bit. But let's take one of those 8% kids. Here's what it means. For every 100 times that kid runs to the offensive boards, he or she is not getting an offensive rebound 92 out of 100 times, only getting rewarded 8% of the time. But as a team, if everybody is going, now we don't, we send four and, and, and uh, we, we have one safety that goes back to secure our basket for transition. But, you know, if, if you add up all those little percentages, 12% here, 9% there, 7% here, six, you know, 7, 8% with somebody else, and all of a sudden you start to get a team percentage that works out pretty well for you. So how important is, is rebounding to success? Well, our Johnson County Community College team has uh, been in the top three in the nation in rebounding seven years running. Four of those seven, we've led the nation in rebounding while setting a national record for consecutive 30-plus win seasons seven years running. So how do you lead the nation in rebounding? Well, you get almost all of your defensive rebounds, and then you get 40, 45, 50 percent of your offensive rebounds. And it's that simple. So that's the end of our video. Okay, so the video really isn't over. You know, as basketball coaches, we spend a lot of time trying to get an opportunity for our kids to get uh, good shots and good scoring opportunities. We spend a lot of time on offense. We saw offensive sets, fast break, out-of-bounds plays, and yet NBA statistics have shown that the second most efficient way to score in the game of basketball is an offensive rebound. You get the ball and you put it back in for a score. Trails only uh, where a kid gets a steal and a breakaway layup at the other end of the floor uh, that, that's the most efficient way to score. But So it means that offense, sets, fast break transition, out of bounds plays all trail offensive rebounding as an efficient way to score. So it's hidden offense and maybe it's something we need to pay a little bit more attention to because of that. Now the other thing that a good offensive team or offensive rebounding team will do is that 
they will slow down a good fast breaking team. Now that sounds almost contradictory because you would think that you got players running into rebound and the, that, that's going to put them out of position when the other team takes off on, on their transition. But here's what actually happens. A lot, most fast breaking teams are not good at blocking out because they're antsy, they want to leak out, they want to get out and get out early on that fast break and as a result it gives you some easier paths to get uh, to the offensive boards. And then the other thing is is that they, because you're getting more easy scores, uh, they're picking the ball out of the net. They have to take it out of bounds and inbound it before they can start their uh, transition thing. And then the other thing that happens is is that so now they say, well, you know, we need to we need to block out more. We're going to stay in. And so right away, the, just a commitment to stay in to try to keep us off the boards is going to limit their fast break. But the, what's interesting is, again, I said earlier, they tend not to be good at blocking out. So now they're staying in still not probably going to be a real efficient at blocking you out and so you're still going to get plenty of opportunities and they're going to be picking a ball out of the net and taking it out of bounds and as a result um, your their fast break's going to be stopped now i should mention we send four players to the offensive boards i might have said that before and we send a safety back so in fact what we do is that we we have a uh, uh we have a manager uh we have a manager up here at half court with a with a second basketball and as soon as the ball is shot, now I've got four guys who are going to go to, to uh, are going to go to offensive rebound. But this manager on the shot rolls this basketball toward the other end. And let's say it's our point guard. It doesn't have to be because I think point guards can be really good to offensive rebounders because defensive point guards aren't good at blocking out. But let's say it's our point guard. Okay, so the shot goes up. Uh, manager rolls the ball in this direction. This kid has to get back and get this ball before it rolls out of bounds or we'll have uh, some consequences. There are going to be some timed uh, sprints or, or whatever it is. So this kid, again, it may not be our point guard. It might be somebody else, but whoever our get back man or our safety man is, is going to go in this direction while the others go uh, to the offense, you know, to get offensive rebounds. And finally, if you have an off-shooting night or if you have, unfortunately have a team that just doesn't shoot the ball well, those extra misses turn into opportunities if you're a committed offensive rebounding team. And you can go get missed shots and get easy scores or create extra possessions for your team and give your team a chance to win when everything isn't going your way shooting the basketball on that particular night. All right, so we've already mentioned that determination or relentless effort are important qualities in an offensive rebounder. But I keep an offense, offensive rebounding efficiency chart called ORE that I devised a, a few years ago. I'm going to show you that in a little bit here. But in it, I'm determining the effort of players in going to the offensive boards. And I might have a kid who has a chance to go to the boards 20 times and goes all 20 times, goes hard, and comes up with no offensive rebounds. So the thing that we talk about then is that we have to learn how to rebound smarter, not harder. And to do that, one of the things we do is we'll look at some stats that will help us with our route choices. All right, so taking a look right here at this uh, half circle that I've got uh, shaded area right there. In the NBA, they chart every miss. Not, I mean, they chart makes too, but they chart every miss and where the rebounds go. And what they found is that 80% of the misses will land within an 8-foot radius of the basket. Now, those 8-footers... Uh, are the result of uh, guys uh, shooting uh, you know, from the NBA three-point line, which is 23 feet 9 inches away, which is three or over three feet farther than high school or college players are, are going to be shooting balls from. So if you're looking at a rebound radius in high school and college, you're probably looking at something that's seven feet, maybe even six feet within the basket. So it's important to know, uh, you know that 80% of the balls are going to land in this area. Now the other part that kind of goes along with this that they've determined is that Let's say we take a shot from right here and the ball goes over here to the basket, misses, 60% of the misses will go to the opposite side of the basket. Now 40% are going to come back toward the shooter, but if you're playing the percentages, you want to know where that 60% area is. Now it's also important to know your teammates' tendencies. For example, if you have a teammate that shoots a low trajectory or a flat shot, you're going to get longer rebounds as a result of that because they're coming in at a, at, a, uh, at a shallow angle, they're going to catch the rim and come away hard, and uh, they tend to have more balls come back toward them, actually, if it's a flat shooter. If you've got a person that's shooting with reasonable arch, then those balls are going to, because they come in at a steep angle, they hit, and 
stay close to the basket. So a kid with good arch is going to be uh, short. So it's important to know these kinds of tendencies uh, with your uh, teammates and to know these statistics so that you can make a better choice on the route that you take to the basket. All right, so we're starting to build a case for offensive rebounding. Let's take a look at some techniques that we can use to get a real advantage uh, over our opponents. I've mentioned before you're going to face some teams that uh, don't block out at all. You'll also face teams that are mediocre at blocking out, but you will face the, high, the better uh, quality teams you play. You're going to face teams that do a really good job of blocking out. And so the question now is, so what do we do to be able to, to uh, still successfully get to the offensive boards? The first technique I'm going to talk to you about, and it is the most important technique. I wish right now that a 76-piece marching band with tr trombones uh, blaring uh, would march through this video right now to put a point of emphasis on how important I think this drill is and can be to help you to become a really top flight offensive rebounding team. The technique is called beat the block out. Now here's the deal. Every one of the, every one of the players on your team has certain manner, mannerisms or idiosyncrasies uh, that they uh, show prior to actually shooting the basketball. And I don't know if it's in their posture, the way they set up, their arm movement, the head dips, or I don't know what they are, but every one of your players uh, has one, and it's important for you to understand what they are because those mannerisms are going to be your cue, are going to be the thing that tips you off to start to run to the boards now. Typically, you're going to find that the defense, at best, is going to begin their block out when they see uh, the arm begin to straighten on the shot. And others uh, that don't do quite as good a job of blocking out might wait until the ball's airborne before they initiate the, you know, the block out. So you can gain a, it might be a quarter of a second, it might be a third of a second, uh, you know, maybe it's a half a second, I don't know, but you can gain this slight advantage. It's slight, but it is an advantage if you will make your move to the basket when you see your team, uh, excuse me, your teammate start to go through the motions prior to actually launching the ball to the basket. And so uh, I think a real important thing to do is this. I think, you know, you do a lot of teams do partner shooting, and it's real easy to partner up with the same person every day. I would partner up with somebody different every day so I could learn those, those idiosyncrasies, those mannerisms of my teammate before they actually launch the ball. The other thing we talked about earlier was paying attention to the tendencies of, of your teammate. Uh, you know, do they have a flat shot, a low trajectory shot? Well, those rebounds are going to come way hard. Or do they have a reasonable arch shot? And those rebounds are going to come down soft and, and drop down into the lane. So, the, you know, th these are kind of you know, really kind of small things, but I think they're important things. And what we tell our players all the time is that we are preparing and practicing to play against and beat the best. I'm never concerned about the middle of the pack teams. I'm never concerned about the bottom of the pack teams. We are preparing so that we can play against and defeat the best teams, the people at the top of the league. If we want to be a championship team, then we have to have championship kind of preparation. Now, the next technique I want to talk to you about, I call them offensive rebound blockouts. And you're going to find this probably most uh, often is, is uh, in a weak side post player, uh, for example, against a zone defense. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about right here. Um, let's say that uh, the basketball is over here, and it quickly shifts from here to here. Maybe even there's a skip pass over to here. And uh, this guy fires off, this, this defender is going to come out, this guy fires across right there, and this guy's trying to get back in here. Uh, and, and let's say that we get a, a fairly quick shot. So I see this happen so many times where this kid will kind of drift in here and allow a defensive player to either get side by side, which is bad enough, or sometimes actually run around inside of them and block them out. So what I want to do right here is it's an offensive rebound block out. When this ball is going to be shot right here, we're going to seek, we're going to seek out number three right here and block them out so that we... Uh, retain that advantage on the inside and that we have the access to that shot that 60% of the time is going to come over on that side. <clears throat> now our next technique is called pinning. Let's say we're in a man-to-man -man situation being guarded in a man-to-man -man defense and the ball's over here and and uh, I am blue five and defensive player gold five is, is right here off in the help side position and a shot goes up. 
okay? Well, again, I'm paying attention to, to the uh, mannerisms of my teammate, and I saw in advance uh, that he was going to shoot the ball. I'm going to run in here and pin uh, yellow five right there. So if I'm blue five right now, I'm going to run into the lane. I'm going to turn this way and block him out. Shot is coming, you know, from that side right there. And I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to pin him right here and look for that 60% rebound now that is going to come over here and give me a chance to get it instead of letting him come back and get me blocked out. However, having said that, let's say that this guy just for whatever reason got an early jump, uh, you know, maybe he did a good job of recognizing when our player was going to shoot and comes over to block me out. If that is the case, then we are going to take what we call the 40% under route and we are going to sprint under the basket, might even be slightly behind the backboard, and we're going to come over to the 40% area. Now, a couple of things happen. This guy might go part way, but I have never seen a guy yet that will go all the way over here uh, and, and keep us blocked out because they, they know, you know, 60%, they're aware, I think, that, you know, 60% of the misses are going to come in this side and they're going to take you so far. If they go with you, they're going to take that, you know, that player's going to take himself out of the rebound uh, picture, and that's a pretty good deal. But if not, he stays here. And then if we happen to get one of the 40% uh, rebound opportunities, then we have a chance to get that ball. So that's called a 40% uh, under route. Now, the next thing is if we have a ball side post, let's run this guy, let's run blue five over to here. And we've got a ball side uh, post situation right there. Well, the thing that we don't want to do, I, 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 call, I call this, we don't want to be a Velcro uh, uh, rebounder. There are times I just see people, they, they, run into, they run into a block out, and it's like they just stick to them, and, you know, and they're done. At worst, one of the things we want to do is at least you know, make one more move. But what we're going to do, when a shot is taken from here, okay, we are again, we're going to take now the 60% underside route. So we're going to go, again, this may take us behind the backboard, but we're going to spin out and we're going to come over and we know that this area uh, you know, will produce 60% uh, of the offensive rebounds on that particular shot. And now we've got a, p a chance for a position right there. But I see, I mean, time and time again, go back and look at any of your game films if you're a high school coach or a college coach. This shot gets taken, and blue five just basically stands there or takes about one step, is blocked out, and they're done. Okay, We, we don't like that. We don't like that at all. So we want to make sure that we're taking that 60% uh, underside uh, uh, route right there. Okay, now the other possibility that we run into is what we call wedging, where uh, you may have a guy who's sort of in position, not a great blockout guy, and once again, the shot comes up here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wedge, I'm gonna wedge this guy out a little bit if I can, I'm gonna get in there and kind of root him, kind of, you know, with my rear end right here, I'm gonna kind of root him out a little bit to see if I can create some space to get that 60% rebounding uh, possibility. So we call that wedging. And I also want to mention, I think uh, two of the very best places to, uh, you know, to, to offensive rebound from are uh, players that are in the middle third of the floor. So in this case, these two would be there. If we had a high post, that person's in, in the middle of the floor. And those players have really got a great, uh, have got a great opportunity to run in and get offensive rebounds. Now, we want to be smart about it. You know, we want them to... We want them to run and read. Don't run blindly, but kind of read. Again, do you, you know, do you know the tendencies of your teammate that just shot that ball? But this is, this is a prime. Middle third of the floor is a prime area to be able to get to offensive rebounds. Now, the other thing we tell our players, uh, I think I mentioned this just a moment ago, is that sometimes you sacrifice for the team. And so one of those sacrifices is that, is that I make one more move. I probably am not going to get you know, to the ball, but... I'm going, to, I'm going to take a route that maybe takes uh, that defensive rebounder out of the picture, so to speak. And then we do this also, for example, if, if we're out here on the, on the perimeter and uh, we know that we're going to get a good block out, we may take a route, we, we, we call this, we just want you to be a runner. Okay, and we may not be going this way. We may recognize we've met resistance, met resistance. Players really doing a good job of blocking out. We may just sprint over here 
and get this guy to go with us and maybe that frees up uh, that player to get in there. So sometimes you just simply sacrifice your body to allow somebody else on the team to get a rebound. Now let's talk about the shooter and offensive rebounding. All right, so let's talk about that shooter's role in offensive rebounding. Well, everybody has heard over and over again for as long as they've played basketball the follow your shot. And I can't tell you how strongly I disagree with the idea of following your shot because I think it sends absolutely the wrong message that you want to send to your shooter. Because really, what are you saying to them? What you're saying is, follow your shot because you're going to miss. And so what I tell our players is that I want you to do this. We use an acronym right here, S-H-O-T, SHOT. And what we tell our, offense, our, our shooter to do in an offensive rebound situation is this. this is number one, you shoot the ball. Second, you hold your position. Third, you observe the flight of the ball. And it, you, a lot of times we know uh, whether it's going to go in or not go in, if you know what I mean, or have a, you know, have a pretty good feeling about that. And then the third thing is that if it happens to miss, and we use that terminology, not when you miss, it's if you happen to miss. Because I, like I tell our players is, you know, I, I think it's, a, here's what I really think you ought to do. I think you ought to shoot, hold, watch the ball go in the basket, and then turn your jersey to the score to make sure they get you credited for that basket and go back and play defense, all right? So, but here's what we tell them is, is the last one is, the T is for track it down if you happen to miss, then you can react to the basketball and go get it. But to just blindly say, I want my players to follow their shot, absolutely not. Okay, so I mentioned the uh, ORE chart, the Offensive uh, Rebound Efficiency a chart that, that uh, I keep. I started this thing a few years ago, and, and it's been helpful in uh, getting our players to uh, uh, see what their performance is really like. So I, this is my worksheet. I sit down in front of a... I sit down in front of a... The TV and, and in front of the uh, uh, a game film, and this one happened to be Southeast Nebraska. And then I, I watch every offensive position, uh, possession five times. So I'm going to look at every player on every possession to see what kind of effort they gave us in going uh, to the basket to try to get an offensive rebound. So if you look down in here, you'll see uh, some numbers. You'll see some, a lot of twos, and you'll see some zeros. You'll see some ones. You'll see some threes. Well, zero, if a player gets a zero, they made no uh, effort uh, whatsoever to get to the offensive boards. They literally stood and watched, so they get a zero. If they took a step or two toward the board, uh, kind of half-heartedly or whatever it is, we at least, uh, uh, we call that a, 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 you know, a very little effort, but at least uh, we recognize they didn't just stand and watch, they were thinking about going to the boards, and then if they get a two, that meant they had a solid effort going to the boards, and a three is they got the offensive rebound, and so what we're looking at then, and we get to the end of the video, is we'll, um, we'll compile uh, their statistics, and it works this way, if you have a zero or a one, it's just like in baseball, so though you made an out. You didn't get a hit, so you, you, know, you made an out. If you get a two or a three, you get credit. And so uh, we'll take a look at uh, a situation right here. You can see Ann, and you run across to the, uh, uh, to the right side right there on Ann's, and you'll see that she went 13 out of 34 times. Not very good. And so she went, uh, so she got uh, credit for 38% uh, of the time making a solid effort or getting an offensive rebound. She did get three offensive rebounds in the 13 times that she went. And so you can go on uh, you know, a little bit further. We'll drop down here and take a look at Susan, for example. Well, there was a great effort. Susan uh, went uh, 24 out of 26 times. She had all twos and threes. She had a, a single one and a single zero. So she went 92% of the time. She got two offensive rebounds as a result. And then we get down here to the bottom, and I'll tally them up for our team totals. The team got 17 offensive rebounds in this game. We went 136 out of 200 times, and we got 68% uh, of, our, of our rebounds. That's a pretty low total for us, really. We're usually up in the mid-70s, and you know, maybe in, a little bit into the high 70s, and occasionally we'll get into the low 80s. Uh, this game was played on uh, November uh, 10th, so real early in the season, and we expect to get uh, those kind of results. Now what I'm going to do is I'll switch to uh, the chart that, that I uh, uh, pre prepare for the players so they can see their results. 
Okay, then I transfer the results uh, from that uh, worksheet that I had. Uh, uh, you know, I, I type everything up for them so you can see our offensive rebound efficiency chart here, Southeast Nebraska. And then you can see what I've done down here is that I, with each player, I've uh, shown them what their, uh, how many chances they had, how many times they got credit for going, and what percentage they had, how many offensive rebounds. Then I show them in order. Uh, what their effort was. I show all their possessions that uh, appeared on that uh, worksheet and then I'll make some comments uh, uh, about uh, uh, you know what the player did. Let's take a look at Kelsey for example. I, I or My comment here is an, another pretty good outing for you 70 plus percent next time. That's what we want our perimeter players to get at least a score of 70 uh, percent or better. And uh, then the next comment I made was, now predict where the rebound will go and go there. And so again, I, uh, for our uh, inside players, our goal is 80%. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I type up these comments. I three-hole punch it and I give uh, you know, a copy uh, to each one of our players. I have a team commentary down at, the, you know, down at the very bottom. I said here, I said we went to the old boards, 136 out of 200 chances for 68% team effort. Got 17 offensive rebounds. We got... Uh, uh, for a, a 40% uh, offensive rebound uh, efficiency. In other words, we, uh, you know, we we got 17. I'm trying to remember what it was. 17 of let's say 45 uh, misses, and uh, so we got 40% of our misses, and that's that's a minimal goal for us is 40%. We probably want to be at 45 or 50. But anyway, gives you an idea. And if you will email me at dougscockleaol.com. It's all lowercase letters, Doug Scockle, all run together at AOL.com. Uh, I'll send you a copy of, uh, of this offense rebound efficiency chart if you have an interest. Now, it is time-consuming, and I do this each time, but if I were a head coach, I probably would assign this to somebody else because it takes a, you know, an awful lot of time, and a head coach has so many other duties to perform that you may not have, t uh, have time to do this yourself. Right, what I want to show you right now is a, is a uh, technique that we use to get offensive rebounds off missed free throws. And we've gotten sometimes eight. I think one time we actually got ten points off of this technique. But a lot of times it's you know four to six points a game. But wow, what a difference that can make. So in this situation, we have the defensive players in their lane spaces. And they've got their feet fairly wide. Uh, they've got a real wide stance right there. You can see it on both sides, wide stance. We're the offensive rebounders in the next uh, slot up. And what we're trying to do is get as far away from that defensive player as we possibly can. So we set up with our feet almost touching, and then this foot almost touching, not quite, but almost touching uh, this uh, lane marker right here. And so what happens is on the release of the shot, on the release of the shot, this player who's in a crouched position now, like a sprinter down the starting blocks right now, is going to lead with this foot, okay, and then this foot will come next, and sprinting across, all the way across the lane, and when this guy steps, you know, this guy's going to block out or attempt to block out, whatever he does, maybe he comes this way to get our you know, guy right there, okay, so we're going to come across and we're going to get inside and create a block out, I'm now my rear end is to him and my, I'm, I'm facing the, the basket right there, this kid is going to do the same thing. The foot closest to the defender is coming first and knows that uh, he or she is going to take a route behind the person on the left. Okay, second foot comes, and now they'll come. And again, this guy was trying to go to keep up. And uh, a lot of times we'll try to keep going, and then th this player just comes off of both of their rear ends and comes on over into here. So suddenly... Suddenly, we've got two players that have uh, the, the inside space. Now, the reason we don't, uh, the reason we don't step with this foot first, is because this person could get up here, and before we could step with the second foot, they could lock us off. So it's going to be that top foot that, uh, excuse me, the, the bottom foot that's going to go first. But I'm telling you, this is really a a, a great technique. And it's uh, really hard for them to uh, block out. And you're going to get some bonus uh, points on offensive rebounds on missed free throws. Well, as we begin to wrap things up, I think it's important to identify what I think is the number one key to success in offensive rebounding. We've talked about having our players be determined in getting to the boards and relentless effort. 
But I think without a doubt, the number one key is consistent commitment by the coach. Your success in offensive rebound is going to be in direct proportion to the emphasis put on by the coach. If it's important to you, it'll be important to them. This needs to be instilled every day. It can't be a lip service type thing. It can't be something that we emphasize in the first week or two of practice and then give intermittent uh, emphasis to the rest of the season. And this is a great place. You know, head coaches are uh, busy people. And this is a great place uh, to uh, turn this over to an assistant coach, allow them to monitor offensive rebounding. And, and it's amazing. You, I, I've seen coaches over and over, they just they run with this. It's all of a sudden it's their thing. They're the, they're the head coach of offensive rebounding, if you will. Now, I think there needs to be consequences and rewards in terms of uh, uh, anything that we're do, you know, going to do competitively. And so if we don't... Uh, uh, do the job we're supposed to do in offensive rebounding. We're going to stop practice right there. We're going to run a time sprint. Uh, down and back has to be done in 12 seconds or less on a 94-foot college floor. Maybe on a high school floor, you might, on an 84-foot uh, floor, you might knock that down, uh, you know, by another second to 11 seconds. But anyway, time sprints. We have peer sprints where uh, the offending player will uh, sit to the sideline. We might fan him with a towel, hand him a drink or so on while the teammates uh, run sprints, and you'll find that that player kind of gets back in line pretty quickly uh, when they realize they're causing uh, their teammates to uh, quote-unquote suffer uh, for their uh, mishap or miscue, I guess you would say. And the reason we do these, uh, the reason we believe in consequences is that there are consequences on the scoreboard. You know, we, we have high standards of excellence that we're working to, to achieve, and, and, and if we don't do the little things and don't do things right, then indeed we're going to have consequences on the scoreboard and could uh, be uh, really detrimental and end up, uh, you know, find yourself on the losing end right there. Now, uh, some of the rewards, I mean, I don't know, we know what your practice uh, situation is. Maybe you skip some conditioning at the end of practice for p people that have excelled. Or uh, some of the things we do is we'll give Gatorade to certain players. The rest of the players get water, uh, you know, at the end of practice. Or And this one is so simple, and it, I can't believe I'm going to tell it to you, but it's really effective, is that we'll give Tootsie Pops to kids or uh, mini bags of M&M peanuts. And you can't believe... Uh, the lengths kids will go to to be able to uh, get that reward, get a Tootsie Pop or get some, you know, some M&Ms. The other thing I think is important is that you give constant praise to these kids uh, that are doing a good job for you. And the other thing that happens is, is that when you're giving these rewards and you're giving this praise to these players, and maybe you have some players that maybe haven't quite bought in, but all of a sudden they see that everybody else is getting rewarded, well, they kind of want to get in on the act, and you'll find that they fall in line uh, pretty quickly also. Well, here's something that I like to do for our players is that after games, uh, we like to hand out game balls, but we do it in the form of a certificate. So we got a, as you can see, a picture of a basketball right here, and we made up this uh, little award on our computer. And so when players achieve uh, excellence in certain areas, now this one you can see is uh, slanted towards offensive rebounding excellence, but we might have a, you know, the best defensive player of the game, so we might have more than one game ball that we give out. But again, we just like to uh, reward our players uh, when they produce excellence for us. You know, I should mention, I think it's really important that you offer protection to your rebounders. Uh, they're going to be in a lot of traffic and down in those rebound trenches, so we like to see uh, players wear mouth guards to uh, offer some protection to, to, you know, to their mouth area. All right, so in closing, I want to remind you that you don't have to be tall to be a good rebounder. But you do have to have incredible determination, relentless effort, and a real urgency to get to the offensive boards. And remember this. It's not the size of the dog in a fight, it's the size of the fight in the dog. So until next time, this is Doug Skockel signing off.